Bob, in trying to understand the nature of consciousness, we must understand the altered states of consciousness, the primary one being sleep that most of us take for granted. But in addition to that, sleep seems so mysterious. Why am I wasting my time six, eight hours a night? Sleep, sleep gets no respect in our <laughs> culture. You know, it, it, it's really perceived as this time when you're just goofing off, lying around, wasting doing time. nothing, wasting time. And if that was the case, then we would figure out ways to get around it. And we try hard and we can't because that's not what sleep is about. Sleep is a time when we're doing as much work as when we're awake. It, it might turn out that for every two hours that we spend awake, taking in new information, finding out new things, learning things, it takes our brain an hour offline to just figure out what it means. It's easy. It's easy to record something. It's easy to learn a fact. But to understand how to use that fact or how it fits together with other things, to decide which new information to keep and which to dump, that's a hard question. And the brain, it appears, the, and the person as a result, needs to go offline. I mean, as we have this conversation, there'll be points where you start thinking about something. And when you think about something, you sort of tune out what I'm saying because we can't, we can't think internally and take in information at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so evolution has figured out that the best way to deal with this problem is take us offline. So for eight hours or so per day out of every 24, the brain just shuts out external inputs, cuts us off from the outside world so it can do what it needs to do. Now, the brain is dealing with new information, but the body's dealing with new information too. If you've been exposed to some infectious agent or if you've been given a vaccination, we know that you need to sleep the night afterwards if you want to produce a good antibody response to it. If you take college students and give them a hepatitis vaccine mm. and then sleep deprive them the night afterwards, when you check two weeks later, they've only made half as much antibody. That's remarkable. So, so if you're not getting sleep, your body doesn't have the time and the condition to optimally prepare a response to that infection or to that vaccine. I know that if I feel myself getting sick, about a third of the time, if I really sleep, I can, I can stop it. Absolutely, and it turns out that one of the first chemicals they ever found in the body that can actually cause animals or people to go to sleep is actually a breakdown product from bacterial cell walls. So part of our evolution has been that when you get a bacterial infection, the mere presence of those bacteria in your body will make you sleepy and will make you go to sleep. And of course, that's how you feel when you get sick. That's one of the best signs that you're getting sick. You just can't stay awake. So we know it has to do with memory processing. We know it has to do with immune function. It also has to do with endocrine function. It's now looking like a lot of this epidemic of obesity we're mm. dealing with mm. might in fact be an epidemic of restricted sleep that it might be that we're not getting enough sleep and that alters our insulin production and our insulin regulation and might be part of the reason that people now are putting on more weight than they used to. People have made a joke that the reason people get heavy when they don't get enough sleep is that they just have more time to eat. <laughs> but it goes beyond that, right? But it goes beyond <laughs> that. It really is that the body's regulation of all of these systems, and I would guess probably of all of our organ systems, is modulated during the night. And it's a time for some systems when it can take new information and change the body as when it processes memories or when it produces antibodies. Or it can take what's changed across the day and bring us back. So sleep seems to have an important role in emotional regulation, too. There's nothing more scary than going to bed at night angry at someone right. and waking up in the morning and discovering that you're still angry. Usually over a night of sleep, those emotions will sort of modulate and, and, and sort of settle out so that you're more evenly balanced in your emotions. And that seems to be another function of sleep, is to sort of bring us back into emotional regulation. So the problem is that we can't see any of these things happening. If I tell someone, well, you're learning a lot while you're asleep, they sort of roll their eyes and say, yeah, right. But in fact, we are. I mean, our brain is taking what we learn during the day and it's modifying it and 
chucking it away to fit in with other stuff. And I mean, how do you know that? Well, we know that from two sets of studies. There are animal studies where we can actually record from nerve cells in the brain mm -hmm. that, for example, reflect where a rat is as it wanders through a maze. And it's learning to try to and find the cheese. And it's learning to find the food. Actually, chocolate, not cheese. Oh, okay. They're not as <laughs> hot for, chocolate, for cheese as they are for chocolate. And if they're going back and forth getting these little pellets of chocolate, you can see these cells firing. This cell fires whenever the rat's here, and this cell fires whenever it's here. Place neurons. Place neurons, exactly, in the hippocampus, a, a deep structure within the deep brain involved with, with memory and space. Mm -hmm. And what you see when the rat goes to sleep is those cells are firing as if it were running back and forth along the track in so its sleep. So it's the same thing. You couldn't necessarily tell the difference just looking at the nerve cell firing, whether the, the, the rat was actually literally running the maze or, That's right. or asleep. That's right. In fact, That's if remarkable. you looked at it, if you looked at it, you'd say, oh, OK, the rat has woken up. It's actually running back and forth in the maze again. Yeah. And what Matt Wilson at MIT has said is that if, the, if those rats are dreaming, I know what they're dreaming about. <laughs> because he can see their brain reenacting that pattern of activity. So they're rehearsing it while they sleep. And there's now studies that have shown that if the rat can run around here and around here, but can't get between them except by this long, difficult route, mm. when they sleep, you will see those, those cells firing in a pattern that they've never taken, but that would be a shortcut if they could do it. As if the rat is saying, why can't I do it that way? So and this is obviously dub, done subconsciously. It's not something that you're deliberately doing. It's just happening. They're not deliberately doing it. Whether they are dreaming about it, we don't know how to ask that question mm. in the rats. Yeah. We can ask that question in the humans. But the way we know that the memories are being manipulated while we sleep is we can train people to learn to do things before they go to bed, and they will be better at them the next morning. This is the second category you're talking this about. This is the second this category. This is human studies. Human studies. So in human behavioral studies, we can, I can teach someone to do something in the morning and test them in the evening and they're no better. I can train them in the evening and test them the next morning and they're 20% faster at it. They're 20% mm. more accurate mm. at it. Mm. And I can look at the kind of sleep they have during that night and predict pretty accurately how much better they're going to be the next morning. And so that's how we know that the brain, in its different sleep stages, in REM sleep and non-REM sleep, REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep where we do our most intense dreaming, that depending on how much time they're spending in those different stages in different parts of the night, that's what predicts how much they're going to be improved the next morning. So for the last year, I've been trying to really improve my table tennis. I'm taking it very seriously. I play with superb players. And so many times, right before I go to bed, I try to imagine the strokes in my mind. Is that, is, is that helpful? There has actually been a study that shows even if you're just rehearsing it in your mind, you can be better the next morning hmm. at actually doing it Good. than if you hadn't rehearsed it. And you're not doing that, I would predict, because of some deep understanding of brain function, but because you have a sense that it works. I talk to, I talk to pianists who say, you know, Bob, I was working on this Chopin etude, and there was this three-measure piece of it that I just couldn't get. I spent two hours on it, and I just couldn't get it to run smoothly. I went to bed. I got up the next morning. I sat down at the piano, and first time through, I had it perfectly. And then we have this funny conversation where I say, so why do you think that is? And they say, well, I, was probably, I probably learned it in those two hours, but I was just tired by the end of uh -huh. it. And I say, so if you had waited an hour and done, you would have been able to do it. And they get this sort of funny look, <laughs> and they say, well, better to wait longer than an hour. And I say, so two or three hours. And then they say, well, better to wait to the next day. Yeah. So they sort of know intuitively that sleeping on the problem works, but it makes no sense to them given their, and most of our understandings of what sleep's about. Sleep is just dead time, we think, and it's really not. I had a psychiatrist call me up once who had a, a student um, who was 
uh, a Harvard undergrad, exams were coming, he had two papers to finish. And the psychiatrist said to me, Bob, is there any reason I can't give him drugs to help stay awake so he can get these papers done? And I thought for a moment, I said, no, I don't think there's any problem unless you think sleep does something. And that's the problem, that people think that sleep is a waste of time. I mean, at best, a waste of, of time. At worst, a sign of laziness, <laughs> right? And lack of, of energy and commitment or anything like that. And in fact, it's probably the most productive eight hours we have in 24. It's just that we can't watch it happen. And so we don't know that it's happening.